8 million on the hover bikes, 20 million on the laser cannon, 30 million for the airships, and 49.95 for the software that lets me put price tags on video footage. That, that last thing, let's cut that. Am I good businessman? We need to talk about the leadership of this organization. How dare you question my, what, what, what the hell is that? An experiment? Now, it's time you- Oh, Jesus, it just pissed out of what I thought was its mouth! It's fine, but aim is not, because you have okay, failed to- Okay, it just scratched kill me into the linoleum. I said it's fine! <laughs> it's time you step down and let me run aim. Uh, yeah, about that. Uh, if these numbers are correct, soon there won't be any aim to run at all. What? We're completely out of cash, even accounting for sales of weapons, stolen vibranium, and bootleg Avengers toys. Some kids prefer Spooderman. Even so, we're bankrupt. Impossible! You are hereby relieved of your status as CPA Supreme and as a living person! Remember, I still need to do your personal taxes, so... I'm sorry. I, I thought this coffee was for everyone. All right, we need big ideas to save AIM. You guys are my brain trust. What have you got for me? Blood car. What's that? It's a car that runs on blood. Terrible. What else? Oh, oh, we watch Wolf of Wall Street and do what the wolf does. He said stop pitching that. What else? Your, uh, toilet's broken. <sighs> I like it. I don't understand it, but I like it. I still don't have a bar mitzvah suit. I'm looking for the right fabric. Do you mind if I have a feel real quick? Not at all, son of Modoc. Lou, stop fondling my brain truck. Dad, one of your dumbasses spilled acid all over my boyfriend. Come on, guys, acid is expensive. Modoc, can I talk to you for a minute? I was listening at the door, and just my two cents, but maybe it's time to let AIM go. Never! Modoc doesn't give up. Flailerg isn't even in my vocabulary. Were you trying to say failure? Yes, I literally deleted it from my memory banks. You don't have to worry. I'm making enough to support us. Maybe it's my turn to take the reins. AIM is Modoc. Modoc is AIM. Without it, I, I wouldn't even know who I am. Wow. If that's true... I think we need to have a very serious conversation about what that means for us. Oh, I'll get it. Well, I hope it's the cool mailman. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. This is going to be my new Avengers MODOK trailer for the new Marvel series that they're doing early next year. So I'll explain what's going on with this, where it fits in the timeline, and what they're doing with the character, big Marvel Phase 4 movie Easter eggs with MODOK. So if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get everything. We'll do a new Amazon giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber. And since they're doing a very robot chicken-like take on the series, let me know which other characters you want them to bring on the show and make fun of. So we'll number these as we go along just to stay organized. But if you have no idea what's going on with this or you didn't know that they were doing a MODOK TV series, it's a very robot chicken looking Marvel series about the MODOK character as he tries to run AIM from one of the guys from Family Guy, American Dad, Seth MacFarlane's team. He also worked on Community at the same time the Russo brothers were working on Community. So a bit of a Marvel connection going way back with Patton Oswalt playing the MODOK character. And some of the other actors you'll probably recognize. Like they have Ben Schwartz, who was just the voice of Sonic. He also did a bunch of Robot Chicken episodes back in the day. You probably recognize the voice of the daughter that MODOK has, played by the person from Brooklyn Nine-Nine here and the person from Lucifer. So there's a lot of very meta stuff going on with this in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And the reason why it looks like Robot Chicken is because it's made by the Robot Chicken team at Stupid Buddy Studios. So totally it's also very similar to Robot Chicken in the way it parodies Marvel Avengers characters. It's just that because this is a Marvel series, unlike Robot Chicken, most of their jokes will probably just be about Marvel stuff. So not so much DC stuff. But to be fair, they do actually reference Marvel Avengers characters all the time on the live action Flash TV show. So technically there's no actual rule about what they can make fun of. I think they're just not allowed to have DC characters show up on screen. But the basic plot of the series when episode one picks up is that MODOK has run AIM into the ground with all his failed schemes to destroy the Avengers and take over the world. So with the company in ruins, an evil version of Google swoops in to try and buy the company and revitalize it the way a normal business would reorganize itself to become profitable again. They basically tell MODOK that you can still orchestrate all your evil schemes to destroy the Avengers, take over the world, but they tell him he has to make AIM profitable by the end of the year or that's it. And it goes in a very arrested development direction with him being kind of like the Michael character at the center of it all trying to run AIM the way he wants to be this supreme being but having to put up with all these people around him being like the Bluth family either incompetent idiots or they force him to attend too many meetings. So he slowly starts to spiral out of control as he loses control of the company and the character himself is all about control. 
As you also saw during the trailer, they gave him a family that you never met before in the comics that he goes home to every night, apparently in New Jersey. That's where Modoc lives within the context of this series. That feels like a very robot chicken thing to do. Like Modoc has a life of his own outside of AIM and he lives in New Jersey with his wife and children. Like one of the children here looks like a giant floating head just like Modoc, but the other kid played by Ben Schwartz looks normal. The really cool thing that Pat and Oswalt and the showrunner said is that they were allowed to use big X-Men characters. They were really surprised by it. They were like, Marvel's really going to let us do this? We pulled from everywhere. Uh, so like Pat said, yes, there's some X stuff. Hopefully we're allowed to say that. Yeah, yeah. Let, let, let's just leave it at that. You notice behind the showrunner there, he has a bunch of X-Men comics and he even held up a bunch of classic trading cards from X-Men the Animated Series, which makes me wonder if a lot of the parody and Easter eggs and references they make during the series are for X-Men the Animated Series. I think it's a little bit easier for them to use X-Men characters like that before the live action MCU movies and TV shows do just because it is animation. There's more suspension of disbelief, so it's a little bit easier to get away with stuff like that. They said that what they did is they treated the MCU canon the same way Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse treated the Spider-Man canon. They pull from everything that's come before, all the TV shows, every comic book, every big MCU movie, everything together at the same time, canonizing it through the show. The same way that Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse did Miles Morales, but it also did Tobey Maguire live-action Spider-Man movie Easter eggs, Spider-Pig, Black and White Spider-Man Noir, Spider-Gwen, Penny Parker from the future, and Spider-Man 2099, just to name a few things. So imagine the robot chicken people doing something more like Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, but just traditionally with Marvel Avengers characters. Originally, the Marvel people behind this and a bunch of other animated shows they were developing for Hulu were going to do a new version of the Netflix Defender style team up with animated shows. They were going to do the Modoc show. They were going to do a Hit Monkey show, Tigra and Dazzler series in the Howard the Duck animated series that Kevin Smith was working on. All those characters were eventually going to cross over in a Netflix Defender style crossover series called The Offenders. So obviously they're trading very heavily on Defenders Netflix references. But then what happened is, is they reorganized Marvel TV under Marvel Studios. Kevin Feige took over the development of all the TV series and some of them got canceled. So they wound up canceling the Tigra and Dazzler series. I also believe they did cancel the Howard the Duck series Kevin Smith was working on. But they are still doing the Modoc series, obviously, and they're still doing the Hit Monkey TV series. I don't really know anything about what's going on with that Hit Monkey series, but the Modoc episodes, Pat Oswalt said, will probably wind up dropping early next year. The big thing you may have heard recently about Modoc during the Marvel Phase 4 live action movies is that originally he was supposed to be the main villain of Ant-Man 3, but then recently they just cast someone who's going to be Kang the Conqueror, so it sounds like they're going more in a Kang time war direction with Young Avengers stuff. Most of you have also been playing the Marvel Avengers game, Modoc a very big character during that. Obviously it's more of an Inhumans plot than it is an X-Men plot. I do think it's really cool that they're finally letting them do new X-Men stuff in new Marvel projects. So hopefully because this is animation, they can just do whatever they want. And the funny thing about Patton Oswalt playing Modoc, because it does sound like he was born to play this character, is that he said when they got the initial call to come on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. as the first version of the Koenig character, he thought that they were calling him to play Modoc. He also wound up showing up during the final season of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. during their big Avengers Endgame time travel storyline as a version of the Koenig's grandfather from the 1930s. I don't know what their long-term plan is for this MODOK animated series, if it'll make it multiple seasons. They have a great pedigree, they have a great cast, great writers, and it seems like it's going to be pretty solid. But the whole thing going forward now with Marvel TV series is that most of them are coming through Disney Plus and their big Avengers level TV shows, all coming from Kevin Feige. They really want to get you to pay for that Disney Plus, so that's why all their biggest stuff is coming through Disney Plus. They also have that Hellstrom TV show that's premiering in a couple weeks that's trading heavily on their Ghost Rider and their darker Midnight Suns mythology. So we'll see what that actually ends up looking like because that's definitely not going beyond season one. They sort of canceled it after they finished season one, so it'll be a limited series. What'll be happening really soon though is that we'll get the Mandalorian season two episodes. Obviously I'll be doing videos for that. As long as you have alerts enabled for my channel, you should see all those videos when I post them. And then after that, we'll get the Avengers WandaVision episodes. So there's some really big stuff coming up later this year. While you wait for everything, everyone click here for the boys season three teaser trailer and click here for my brand new Avengers WandaVision trailer. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe. I'll see you guys tonight.